Hey viewers, uh, I've been looking forward to this video. This is one that's been requested by multiple viewers, and it's how to build a fixie. Um, I've had this frame sitting in my garage. I bought it for you know years ago, and I was going to build it up. And uh, the problem is the the cable stop on the rear chainstay broke off, and so I couldn't really mount the cable. You know, I could probably get a clamp on one, but was, anyway. Um, this is actually a pretty nice frame with flat raised uh, joints here. Everything, everything's nice and smooth there. And so it's a really nice frame. Uh, it was pretty good quality for Schwinn at that point in time. Um, this is early 70s. So this will make a nice platform for a Vixie, I think. Now, there's some different ways you build a Vixie. Is you can get track wheels or anything like this. My goal for this project is to keep this as reasonably cheap as possible. So that's my goal. And so, I mean, there's probably better ways to do a lot of this, but my goal for this is to keep it cheap, you know, with as few specialized parts as possible. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm gonna start off by uh, stripping off a lot of the old parts that I'm not going to uh, need or going to replace, like this chain here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this chain. And get rid of that. I'm not going to need this uh, derailleur, so I can go ahead and remove this. Now I'm going to remove this uh, rear brake and reflector here. Okay, I don't need this little bit of uh, brake cable here. Uh, get that out of there. I don't need the uh, brake cable hanger here, so I can remove this. bolt out here, pull this off, and then I'm going to leave the, the bolt here. I got the uh, little uh, clamp here, and I can always upgrade this clamp with a nicer clamp, but like I said, I'm going to try to keep this project as cheap as possible. There's a lot of different things you can do in this uh, project that, you know, make it nicer, uh, better seat post, better uh, clamps, stuff like that, um, but that's all up to you. I can always take the seat clamp off and run it over a wire wheel and get it all nice and cleaned up too, and I may do that at a later point. Right now I just want to kind of focus on getting this bike built. Okay, I'm going to be replacing the uh, cranks on here with another set, uh, so I'm going to remove these. Got a 14 millimeter socket right here. Uh, there's usually like a, a 14 millimeter nut or bolt in here. Uh, see which flavor this one is here. Okay, this has got the uh, 14 millimeter bolt. I've got my crank puller tool here, and then I'll thread this into the crank. And it should uh, turn in relatively smoothly, at least to start there. And then I can kind of tighten it in a bit. I want to make sure that it's nice and threaded in there. And then I can tighten this in here. That goes against the spindle in there. And then as I tighten this in, it will basically pull the uh, crank off the spindle, which is, is pressed on there. And 
There we go. And that should come right off like that. And then I'll pull this side off as well. Move this little dust cover here. Move the 14 millimeter bolt in there. Usually once you get it broken loose in there, then you can just unscrew it by hand. And then again, I've got my crank puller here. I'll thread this in. And you want to be sure not to cross thread this in. So this got started in pretty smoothly to begin with. And now it's a little tight, but it's not cross threaded. Just probably the threads are dirty a little bit. And it should be in there enough, get enough of a hold in there. So I'll tighten this in here and hold on to this. Let's see. Pull that crank arm off there. And this seems to be turning pretty smoothly there. Now I'm going to remove the kickstand. Most kickstands just kind of bolt on there, but Schwinn uses a funky system to where it's got like a spring and a little locking pin on there. And I have another video on this, but basically you can take like a 10 inch uh, crescent wrench with the hole in the handle there, slide it over the uh, kickstand like this. And there's a little uh, thing in here, like a little spring-loaded uh, um, ring in here. You can kind of push the uh, wrench like this. It'll push that little uh, ring in. And then you pull this little pin out here. And on this one, the ones I've seen have the little narrow in end of the pin in the hole there. But I've actually heard of other people having uh, with the fat end down in the hole there. So either be prepared either way, whether you have the, the, the narrow uh, end of the pin in the hole or the fat end of the, the pin in the hole. Either way, you press this little part in, it kind of releases pressure, you can pull the pin out, and then you can release pressure on there, and then the, the kickstand will come out like that, all as one unit. Now I'm going to remove the front derailleur, I don't need that, and on this bike it's a 9 millimeter uh, socket. Just holding this clamp on and uh, other ones that might be an Allen wrench or whatever. So just going to unclamp it and oh, there's another two screws on this one here. So, so I'll remove the clamp bolt over here, and then this, I need a deep socket on to, to reach over this bolt here. And get this clamp off. And then it looks like there's a screw here. And holding, there's another little thing in there, so I'll unscrew this. This is different, I haven't seen a front derailleur like this. Okay, got that off there. There's like another little, uh, like a little bolt or something over there. Well, up, oh, so just a washer holding that on there. Okay, I don't need the shifters. I don't need this little uh, hanger here. So this is already loose here. So I pull this off, pull these off, and I'm guessing I'm going to need a spacer down here. So to fit between here, I'm going to clean this up a little bit here just to some of this rust on here with a wire brush, clean up these threads a little bit. If you didn't see it, this is the, uh, the bike that I pulled the, uh, the frozen uh, stem out of there that just wouldn't come out and I ended up cutting the thing out because it was just seized down inside the, the fork tube there. 
kind of a worst case scenario as far as uh, getting a fork or a stem out. So, okay, so these threads look much nicer. So let me see. So I got a couple little uh, spacers, uh, little lock washers. They fit on here, they're keyed. So it'll fit in this little slot back here, hopefully. Uh, a little tight. Go down there. And I don't think one's gonna be enough. Now I just got a regular washer there and then tighten this on. I think this should work. Yeah, these spacers will take the place of the cable hanger and the uh, the shifter little mount on there. And I think that's enough spacers in there. Okay, it's a little tight. I'll just loosen that and then adjust this. Good. Okay, I got a new stem here. Uh, interesting thing is like on the older American bikes, the Schwinn, the um, diameter of the stem is actually narrower than like the British standard, which is about 22.2 millimeters. Uh, the Schwinn is actually about 21.1 millimeters. So even smaller than the, the French stems. So I'll put a little bit of coating of grease on here. This is a steel stem here for the moment, but I'm gonna see if I can find a, a nicer aluminum one. Um, but this was inexpensive, but this will work for, for now, and tighten this on here, and I'll probably adjust that a little bit, and then put some handlebars on here, I've got, I got a bunch of different handlebars, um, some of the handlebars that came off of this were, uh, drop bars, uh, and I've got some uh, like more flat uh, type bars here that I pulled off of another bike. And so I can put that on there. I can put these on there. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I'll put the flat bars on there for right now, but I might change it. Uh, change my mind by the time the video is done here. But this will kind of hold be a placeholder for the for the uh, bike for right now. Okay, now I, I need to uh, get a crank set. This is the original crank set that came off the Schwinn and I could theoretically use this. What I want to do is get a, a crank set where I could have uh, just one uh, chain ring on there. And uh, I can, this has got the bolts on there, so I can remove this little uh, chain ring off of there. And I can remove this guard, leaving just the, uh, the big chain ring. One of the problems with this is this big chain ring goes all the way down here and is connected directly down to the hub down here and so I can't really replace this chain ring if I want to and also I can't really reposition this chain ring and move it in kind of like what I want to do so I have some other uh, crank sets that I pulled off of bikes so I've got this this one here is a uh, 144 BCD uh, bolt center diameter, so it's like 144 millimeters around here diameter. That's kind of a, a an unusual size. Uh, so the, the, the chain rings I can find are a lot of them are made by uh, Compagnolo or uh, there's a couple other companies make them, but they're not super common. So I can find them. 
Um, the chain ring on here is uh, 52 teeth, is the large one on here. Uh, so I could find some other chain rings. I want to, because ultimately I probably want to put like an, a chain ring about 46 or 48 teeth on on there maybe. But uh, so I could use this. Um, but I have another uh, crank set here. This has got the BioPace chain rings on there, which I really don't want. But the uh, diameter here is uh, 130, which is a more common size. So. And I do have another chain ring here. This is actually a 53 tooth uh, chain ring, and this will fit on there. So what I could do is take these BioPace chain rings off and install this 53 tooth on there. And then in the future, I can take this off and put like a smaller chain ring on there. Um, now, one of the, the things I could do with this is, if you notice here, that the the uh, large chain ring is mounted on the sort of on the outside and then the smaller chain ring is mounted on the inside. What I want to do is take these off and I want to have the large chain ring mounted onto the inside because that's what it's going to do is it's going to move the chain, la chain line for the, uh, the big chain ring there in closer to the frame. And the reason I want to do that is that on the rear wheel I'm going to have the single cog that's going to be sort of the inside and I can I can move it a little bit out, but if I move the big chain ring in, the little cog on the back, I don't have to move it out as much. So the farther I can move the big chain ring in, then that helps my chain line. So what I'm gonna do is remove these bolts here and install this guy. Now a couple of bolts are already miss, missing. I kidnapped those for something else, but not a big deal because I'm gonna be replacing these. So, just unscrew these, and all these are is there's like a little uh, bolt here, and then there's like a little nut on the back that's recessed. And you kind of want to hold this on the back there so that it doesn't turn as you're unscrewing the bolt part. And so now those are off. These are the, the, the little uh, bolts that came off of the old one. The problem with using these is that they're designed to hold two chain rings and go through there. So these are just going to be too long. Now one of the things you can do is if I uh, take this little uh, uh, nut part here, the little recess nut, I could actually like cut part of this off or just put it on a grinder and kind of grind it down so that it's not as deep and so that when I screw it together it'll screw down in deeper and then that would that would work pretty well. You can also buy newer ones of those that are already shorter to begin with and that's what I did. I bought these off of eBay and they were actually pretty cheap. Okay now to put this together um, this has got this little part right here, uh, which you know, like normally went between uh, the chain ring and this here uh, to keep the chain from kind of getting down in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and have this uh, facing out, but have it behind this here, the cleaner side of the chain ring is so it's the cleaner side of the chain ring is facing out. And then the part that was on the inside here next to the smaller chain ring is facing in. And then that little part there is sort of hidden behind the, the, the crank arm there. Just makes it look a little nicer. And then the two parts of the uh, little uh, part here, the bolt here with the little hex fitting on there and then the little nut part with the little flats on there. So I'm going to stick the little nut side on the back side on the inside here. 
like that. And then take the bolt, fit that down, and then screw them together there like that. And then just do that for all five of the bolts. Oh, another way you could have used the the uh, longer uh, bolts and nuts in there, the original ones, is um, if you use some uh, like washers in there to uh, space them out. That's another way that you could have used those as well. Uh, but then again, you got to buy the the little spacer things in there. But uh, Whatever you find easiest. Like I said, I got these off of eBay and they were pretty cheap. I don't know, like a few bucks. Okay, so I got those on and if I want to tighten them, there's like a little, uh, the little flats on the back there. I can kind of hold them with a screwdriver if I need to and then tighten these down so they're nice and tight and so there you go I think it looks pretty nice like that okay so I'm ready to install the crank so slide this on here and get this started in here and that's getting close but not touching so I should be okay there Let's see how it is after I get this cranked on. Okay, close but not touching over here. I'll keep an eye on that. Make sure it goes all the way around, not touching. Okay. And then I'll put this uh, little dust cap on here. And same thing on this side. Put the arm at 180 degrees from the other side. Slide that on there, so. And start this bolt in. that on and then put the dust cap on like that and just a note if this had actually been so close that it was actually uh, touching on the frame there what I would have wanted to do is uh, replace the bottom bracket with one that with a slightly longer spindle so that would have uh, moved the uh, the crank out but because the issue is I'm putting a, like a larger chain ring in closer. That's why it's so close to the uh, frame where the this would have been actually farther out and the smaller chain ring, ring would have been in there. So this is actually pretty good because I want to have it closer in and hopefully in line with the uh, cog on the rear wheel when I get that installed. Okay, now remove the rear wheel. Slide that off. Okay, now I need to remove the freewheel from the wheel here, so uh, remove the skewer and then use the appropriate uh, freewheel wheel remover tool for your freewheel. And so I got this one here and these can be very, very tight. So I got a uh, breaker bar here with a one inch socket that fits the park tool tools here. So pull this off. Fortunately, this wasn't that tight. I think I took this off uh, not a long time ago, so it's not super tight. Pull that off. And I'll pull this chain guard off because I'm not going to be using that. Okay, now I'm going to clean this wheel up and get ready to install the uh, track cog. Okay, I got this hub cleaned up pretty well. I, I especially focused on getting these threads nice and clean here. 
Uh, I use some uh, mineral spirits and a brush and everything brushed in those uh, so I want those threads nice and clean and I'm going to install a uh, track cog here. Uh, this is actually it's designed for a 3 seconds inch chain where a, n a normal track cog is designed for a 1 8 inch chain. This uh, cog is designed for a 3 seconds inch chain so I can use a standard chain and the, co the chain ring I used on the front is also designed for a, just a standard uh, chain ring as well. So I have some uh, thread locker blue here medium strength and I'm going to install this on into the threads. Just put a little bit around here. Just kind of help it lock into place there. And then there's a part that sticks out and then a flat side. I want the part that sticks out here to go in towards the hub. And then I'm going to thread this on. Like that. And I want this nice and tight. Normally a, like a freewheel tightens as you uh, pedal. And this the same thing with this, except this, I want this as really tight. So I'm going to use a uh, chain whip here to tighten this. Because I want this as tightened into the hub as I can get it. Real tight there. Okay, so now that I have that on there, I'm going to install a lock ring. This is actually the lock ring from a bottom bracket. So if you have an old bottom bracket lying around, uh, you can just uh, take the lock ring from that, and hopefully there, there's hopefully enough threads still here. So put like a little bit of uh, the thread locker here. and screw this on and then I want this nice and tight so now I have a tool here so I'm going to tighten this on and I want this nice and tight up against the track cog and again See if I can get this track, track cog any tighter. I want this as tight as possible to start off with. Because when you pedal backwards, it's going to want to unscrew and so I want this all as tight as possible on there. <clears throat> there. Because then when the uh, track cog, you pedal backwards, the track cog is going to want to unscrew, and, but it's going to hit the lock ring. So the lock ring is hopefully going to hold this on there. Now, this is a relatively cheap way to do this. A better way is to use like an actual track wheel with like with a fixed setup for a uh, fixed cog on there. Um, but like I said, this is I'm going to do this as cheap as possible. So this is a pretty good method, but it, this is not 100% reliable because it, you um, if you go to uh, you're using this to pedal backwards to brake, and so there's always the possibility that this is going to unscrew and that you do not want that to happen. So if you're using a, a, like a, a system like this as a backup, you want to have a handbrake um, just as safety because you don't want this to unscrew and all of a sudden now you have no brakes. So if you're using a system like this, you want to make sure that you have a handbrake set up on there. I installed the skewer and installed the wheel onto the frame here and everything's looking good so far but we're not done yet. Uh, now we have to uh, check the chain line and most likely we're going to have to move the uh, rear cog over this way and I'm going to show you how to check all that stuff. 
First, I want to measure from the center line of the bike over to the chain ring here. And you can use a ruler. I have a caliper here that can uh, roughly do that. So measure from the center of the frame over to the center of the chain ring there. And that's about 40 millimeters. So you want to write that down. 40 millimeters from the center line of the bike over to the center line of the chain ring. Next, I want to measure the distance between the two chain stays. So if I just kind of go ahead and measure here and that's about 126 millimeters. So there's 126 millimeters between here and here. So if you divide 126 by two, that's 63. So the center line of the frame here is 63 millimeters from here and 63 millimeters from here. So we want to remember, remember that, 126 and 63. Okay, now I want to try to measure from the inside of the chain stay over to the center line of the cog. And this is going to be a little trickier here, just because um, the chain stay or the cog is uh, larger diameter to where I can reach in there. So I'm just going to try to do my best here with the caliper. You can also try a ruler again. And I have about 28, it's about 29, 29 millimeters from the inside of the chain stay over to the center line of the cog. Okay, I hope you guys are ready to do some math here. So on the front we had the seat tube and we had the chain ring. And from the center line of the seat tube over to the center line of the chain ring, we had 40 millimeters. On the back, we had the chain stays. The distance between the chain stays was 126 millimeters. Okay, so that means that the center line between the two chain stays is 63 millimeters. So that's the same on both sides, 63 millimeters. Okay, so now we had the uh, cog back there. I measured from the chain stay over to the cog. That was um, 29 millimeters right there. So if we subtract 29 from 63 we get 34. So 34 millimeters. So what that means is from the center line of the bike, the frame there, the cog is currently 34 millimeters over. And since the chain ring is 40 millimeters over there, that means that the cog needs to come out by 6 millimeters. So that's 40 minus the 34, 6 millimeters. So we need to move that uh, track cog over 6 millimeters to the outside there. And we're going to do that by uh, moving the spacers. Okay, now I need to take apart this hub and uh, swap the spacers on this axle to move this cog over uh, this direction. So what I want to basically do is take about 6 millimeters worth of spacers from this side and move them over to the other side. And before I take this apart, I want to kind of get an idea of how much space is here, because this is what uh, fits into the chainstay. And so there's about like one, two, three, four, five, about six threads there. So I want to have about six threads uh, when I put it back together. And so let me see. I just start taking it apart here.
Okay, here's the parts of the axle. Um, so this was the non-drive side and this is the drive side here. So for the most part, taking this part off, these two parts are roughly equal. So about 18 and just short of 18. This nut here is just a little bit thinner than this nut over there. Um, so what I want to do is add six millimeters of spacer over here and subtract six millimeters of spacer off of this. This is about 17 millimeters. So I want to uh, have in place of this about 11 millimeters of spacer and nut. So what I have is I got these at local uh, bike shop. This is about six millimeters. So I'm going to put this over here uh, between this nut and this little lock washer. So that uh, adds six millimeters over there. And then I got a spacer and a nut here. And these add up to 11 millimeters. So if I put this over on this side, that in effect moves the whole thing over by six millimeters. Okay, I pulled out the uh, seals and bearings out and have kind of cleaned them up, get them all lubed up here, and then there's the bearings. Squirt some uh, grease in between all the bearings in the cage there. And set those down in there. And then the seal just went right on top of here, just kind of pressed in and flip the wheel over. And then get gr grease down in between the bearings and the cage. And then they sit down in there. And then the seal just presses in on top of those like that. Okay, now I'm ready for the axle. Um, I've already kind of cleaned all these parts up. And uh, the, the side with the uh, more threading, that's the uh, drive side. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those parts on there first. And we'll get a little bit of grease on this whole thing because I cleaned it all off. And what I want to do is install this cone first and get it threaded all the way, you know, way on there. I'm going to slide this uh, little uh, lock washer on here. It's a keyed, keyed washer so the little uh, part goes into this little slot here. And uh, like that. Then there was a lock nut here. This lock nut goes on there. Okay. Okay, now the spacer, and then this little end nut goes on here. And this is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna put this end nut on there. And what I want is to put it on there so there's about uh, five or six uh, threads sticking out there. That looks like about right. I want it to be about the spacing that it was when I took this thing off. Now what I'll do is I'll take this lock nut here and screw this back out into this end nut. And I'm going to tighten that down. So use the crescent wrench to hold this. And I believe this was... Uh, 16 millimeter. So I'll tighten this back out into that nut out there. Stop. Then got this little lock washer, slide that out, and then I can take this cone and screw this back out 
into the rest of the stuff here. So I can hold this with the 16 millimeter and then tighten the cone out into the lock nut and lock washer. That's a 15 millimeter wrench there. Okay, so now this side is all put together. Now I'll take this axle, I'm going to slide it into the drive side so it comes out through the non-drive side there and I can wipe off a lot of this excess grease there. Now I can take this cone and screw this down to where it hits the bearings. Slide this uh, little lock washer on there. Slide my spacer on there. And then take this little end nut and screw this onto there. This is also a lock nut for the cone. Now one trick is to put the bottom part into like a vise and so that gives you actually more control over adjusting the cone and holding the cone while you tighten the lock nut because you know the axle's not going to turn there. And let's check for play. No play there. And pull this out and just see if it turns smoothly. It feels okay. Like that. So tighten that in a little bit more. And I'm gonna hold this and lock this down nice and tight there. There. And turns nice and smoothly. Okay, so I got the wheel back in the frame now and check the spacing here. And if if it's right, it should be around 23 millimeters. Yep, it's a, close enough to 23 millimeters right there. So now the uh, chain line between the rear, uh, the cog here and the uh, chain ring should be pretty close to straight. Now in the process of moving the uh, cog over there, readjusting the hub and moving the cog over there, the whole wheel moved over there. So now the uh, wheel, the rim, is off center. So what I, now what I'm need, going to need to do is redish the wheel to move the rim this way a little bit by adjusting the spokes. Now I'm going to use what's called a dishing tool. Um, it's got these two little blocks here at the ends that sit right on the rim and then it's got this other little part here which I've adjusted to come down and just touch the nut that sits against the uh, chain stay there. And so that's adjusted right there. So now if I flip this over, now if the uh, wheel was dished properly, this should come down and again just touch the nut on this side. But there's a big gap there. So what I need to do is adjust the spokes so that this whole hub moves a little bit this way so that uh, both sides will be nice and even. So I'm going to put the wheel on a truing stand and start adjusting the spokes to uh, adjust the wheel. Okay, I've taken the tire off the wheel and I have the wheel now mounted in a truing stand and the, the calipers here are adjusted to the uh, down by the rim here and there's definitely a big gap on one side more than the other and that should give me a pretty close uh, adjusting the dish there and before I start here I'm going to spray a little bit of lubricating oil in around each of the little spoke nipples to uh, help make sure that they're nice and loosened up because so, I'm going to be adjusting them all and 
they probably haven't been messed with for years and years. Okay, so I'll let that soak into the spokes for a little bit and hopefully that'll help loosen them all up so that they'll adjust nice and smoothly. Okay, I'm going to start at the uh, the valve uh, stem hole here. Um, the there's half the spokes are going over this way and half the spokes are going over th this way. So what I want to do is this, the spokes that are pulling it this way I want to loosen and the spokes that are pulling it this way I want to tighten that way it moves it over. So the spokes that are pulling it this way I want to uh, turn um, let me see clockwise yeah so I'm gonna turn it just a half a turn clockwise then I'm gonna go to the next spoke and then turn this counterclockwise half a turn then go to the next spoke and turn this clockwise half a turn next spoke counterclockwise half a turn and then do that all the way around and keep doing that until it pulls the wheel over okay I've been tweaking the truing on this adjusting the spokes and so I've got it pretty much dead center between the two calipers here and the wheel looks pretty true and you know so after it was doing it like half turns then it was down to quarter turns and then eighth of turns and then just like a smidge in there just kind of get it adjusted fine-tuned and it actually looks pretty good right now so I'm gonna go check the dish now I want to check the dish again so get this and that's like right down there and flip this over and that's right down there looks like the dish is about dead on nice okay I got the wheel mounted and spins nice and smoothly and nice and true and uh, it's it's centered in there very nicely uh, one thing to be aware of is when you're redishing the wheel like this, you might run into an issue where there's uh, the spokes are too long or too short. So like it's possible that the spokes might uh, start protruding out through the nipple this way or they're too short where they're not holding into the nipple this way. If that's the case, then you're probably going to end up needing to replace the spokes, uh, the ones that you're having issues with. If they're too long, what you possibly do is take like a Dremel tool and just kind of grind the, the tips down so they shorten them a little bit. Uh, it's also another possibility if, if they're too short to where you come up and you adjust them and then the, the uh, dip nipple just won't, runs out of threads where it just won't uh, adjust anymore. So at that point you'll need to buy a uh, new uh, uh, spoke that's just a little bit shorter than the one that's in there. Okay, so I got a brand new chain here. I'll set that over there like that. And I'll set this over like this. And then I've got like a little bit of a uh, hanger here, like a little, uh, it's bent at two inches. And so I can use this as a hook here to hook this in like this. And then one thing I wanna do is loosen this wheel here. Uh, get this in here like this. Pull this in here. With this, hook this a little bit farther there like this. And then adjust the wheel back. See if the tension's right on the, wheel, on the chain like that. And then tighten the wheel in place. And that looks like about it. So I'm gonna break the chain right here and insert like a master link right into that spot there. So let me see, I'll break the chain right here.
like that. Pull the tool out. And then I can pull this out of here like this. Uh, actually relax the wheel a little bit. The tension on the chain. Pull this out. And then I've got this little, uh, what's called missing link that comes with the KMC chains. And it's like a little master link. And it's like the two side plates of the outer, the two outer plates of a link. So just kind of get those hooked together and then pull it apart. And so now they're locked in place like that. And then I can tighten the wheel again. Just pull it tight. Put tension on the chain. Clamp it down. So there, I got the chain installed. And so you can see the fixed gear in action there. And it's working pretty nicely so far. Okay, now I'm going to install a uh, front brake on here, and I have a caliper type brake on here. What was originally on here was a center pole type brake, um, and it was netted, but the, uh, this uh, brake here is designed for recessed mount. So, when this goes in here like this, the bolt doesn't come out through the back. There's this little nut that extends in, but this hole is too small. So I'm going to need to drill this hole just a little bit bigger so that this nut will uh, fit inside there. Okay, I have a 5 16 inch drill bit here. Optimally, uh, an 8 millimeter drill bit uh, would be uh, used, but um, metric drill bits are not easy to come by. I don't have any. So I'm going to drill this out with a 5 16 inch drill bit. This is maybe touch on the small side, so I may have to just ream it around a little bit. Let's see here. Let me get it going. Uh, spray it with just a little bit of oil. Okay, so I'm through. Make sure the, the nut fits and the little nut does fit through there. Excellent. Now I can make the, mount the brake on the front of the fork there. I'm using a, a concave washer there to match the curvature of the front of the fork. And uh, then turn this around, get the bolt lined up with the hole there, insert this uh, nut into there. And then I can screw this on with a Allen wrench. And there. I may still need to adjust the, the brake from there, but it's mounted on there. Like that. Okay, I don't like the length of these bars, so I'm going to shorten them down uh, by a couple inches on each side. So, got my hammer. Turn it there. And Quenches there. Then using my tubing cutter, I'm going to just cut these down shorter. So one side done. like that. Then it comes with this little part here. Go ahead and clean that out. Do that on both sides. Now I'm going to install a uh, brake lever. Um, I'm only installing it over on uh, the left side because I'm just going to have a front brake on here like this and 
Get it on there. I'm going to install it towards the inside. I can always move it, so I can ride it, have the brake right there like that. Now I need to cut a bit of cable housing to go here for the brake. And so that looks probably about the right length right there. So I'll cut that there. There. Okay, ready to install the cable here. So, get the cable up through the bottom of the brake here. Put it back in there. There we go. And through here, get these little slots lined up here. There. Through that. I've got a my bit of cable housing here. I'm going to put a ferrule on the the one end because the ferrule is going to fit into here, but not down into there. So I'm only going to use a ferrule onto the one end. Fit that down through there. Yep. Uh, like that. Get that in there. Run the cable down through the barrel adjuster here, down in through the little clamp part there. Pull this down tight. Get that seated there. And then I can kind of get this rough adjusted there and tighten this down. See how this is going to feel here. And I may loosen this up just a little bit. Like that. And that's pretty good. So, I mean, I can always, uh, yeah. It's got pretty good clearance there. Not rubbing. Eh, that'll be fine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten this down here, like that. Okay, cut this cable here, leaving about an inch and a half on there, like that, and then put a little crimp end on here, so it, I don't get stabbed or have the, the cable be fraying all the time, like that. Crimp it on there, nice. Okay, so that's on there now. Now, boom. Nice. Well, there it is, all done. I put uh, some uh, new tires on here. These tires, I actually picked them up real cheap at a thrift store, 99 cents each. They were brand new. I wrapped the handlebars. I could put grips on here, but I thought handlebar tape would be uh, cooler. It's real cheap handlebar tape. Um, I put a new seat on there just because I didn't like the other seat. It was a cheap, hard plastic seat. And so uh, this is a relatively inexpensive saddle itself. I put some clipless pedals on there. You can use regular pedals or pedals with straps on there or whatever your preference is. I like clipless pedals and uh, these SPD pedals are fit my shoes. I plan on uh, probably in the springtime, it's too cold to paint right now, but in the springtime when it warms up, I'll probably take this, all this stuff apart and then paint the frame and maybe I'll make a video of that. Like I said, if you're going to use this uh, method of going to a fixie with a threaded cog onto like uh, a freewheel mount with a lock ring, definitely include a brake, you know, at least one brake. Because even though it might be a very small possibility, there is a chance that you're going to back pedal and then this thing is going to unscrew and then you have no brakes. Um, on a track hub, the cog is actually fixed on there to where it won't unscrew. But on this, there's always a small possibility that it will unscrew and you do not want to have that to happen. So include a brake just as a safety measure. Anyway, hope you found this useful or interesting. If you did, please click like. I always appreciate getting likes on my videos and it helps me out. 
If you're not subscribed to my channel, go click the subscribe button and you'll see new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with cool new videos. And I'm also over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.